Greetings. The Federal Reserve has raised the Fed funds rate another 0.75%, which is a huge hike. The last few hikes were also 0.75% each, and I'll show you how steep of a cumulative rise that has been and how misguided that is. Longtime viewers of this channel know that I advocate a Fed funds rate of 0% and continuous permanent quantitative easing because that is needed to offset technological deflation, and all data corroborates that as the accurate thesis. However, that is at odds with all the textbooks that PhD economists have memorized. These textbooks were written 50 to 70 years ago and take into account the Great Depression and other things like that. And that's why the Federal Reserve is always reactive, is always acting too late, and has a fundamental misconception about what the economics of technology and the 21st century in general really are. So this is from CNBC. The Federal Reserve approved a 0.75 point hike to take rates to highest since 2008 and hints at change in policy ahead. So let's scroll down to see the chart. This is the Fed funds rate target rate since July 2006. Now, if you recall, what they did is raise rates too much in 2004 through 2007, although still at a very slow rate. It took them a full three to four years to go from 1% up to five and a quarter percent and when the housing market started to crash they cut rates very quickly but they started 18 months too late it took them 18 months to figure out what people in the real world were already experiencing then the zero percent fed funds rate was still not enough so quantitative easing began as a way to simulate negative interest rates and i'll talk about that that kept going for a number of years and then other countries also began to print money via quantitative easing creating a worldwide exponentially rising pipe of qe which i speak about in my monthly monetary creation reports they tried one experiment of raising interest rates. Why? There was no evidence of inflation in 2016. They just thought that if unemployment becomes too low, that means too many people have jobs. That's the language they use. Too many people have jobs. And that's why inflation must be around the corner, even though there was no evidence of inflation. So they started edging up the interest rate. And that was already a disaster because they made the interest rate too high. So they were already lowering well before COVID. This is 2019. Then COVID force them to lower it faster, but they were going to have to lower it to 0% anyway. 0% has to be permanent for reasons that I often speak about, and in fact, QE has to be on top of the 0% to simulate a negative interest rate. But now, they are reacting to inflation. A, they shouldn't be reacting to it at all. It's very transitory. But B, even if they wanted to do something, why start too late? This is the steepest rise ever in the Fed funds rate. This is indicative of people who don't know what they're doing. How can any orderly, measured, well-planned strategy have an increase rate like this? This is very analogous to a novice day trader who overcompensates too late and goes too far. Anyone who has been a day trader can relate to what I'm saying. A novice will react too late and then go too far in the overcompensation of that strategy. And unfortunately, these PhD economists do not have the mindset of a hedge fund manager or a day trader. And therefore, they are doing this without realizing how much trouble they're causing. No economy can function properly when you have this much of a swing in the Fed funds rate, which they shouldn't be doing. But even if this were the right thing to do, to have to increase it this quickly is indicative of reactiveness and really not knowing what is going on. This chart says it all. There are 600 PhDs at the Federal Reserve and a whole bunch of other PhD economists that work with the Federal Reserve. The entire profession is a complete failure based on this chart alone. How can any rise like this be justified? That means they are caught by surprise yet again. But also what they're doing is very wrong. It is going to tank the economy for sure. And to see why, we go to the next chart. Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. This is the Wu Jia Shadow Federal Funds Rate. Longtime viewers of this channel know what this is about. So this is an attempt by two economists, Cynthia Wu and Fandora Jia, to combine quantitative easing and the Fed funds rate to create a composite of what the effective federal funds rate is at a given time and thereby simulating negative interest rates. When the Fed funds rate is above zero, then the blue line and the purple line are in sync. But when the Fed funds rate is zero and quantitative easing is going on, because quantitative easing is only done when the Fed funds rate is already zero, then you see an approximation of a negative 
negative interest rate. It got as deep as minus 2.8 percent, minus 2.89 percent in 2014. Now this negative trend is very distinct and it is indicative of technological deflation in the economy. The atom, the accelerating technonomic medium of the world, generates an exponentially rising amount of technological deflation, which is evident from the downward trend in the Wuja shadow rate, which by now, by late 2022, should be minus 3 or minus 4 percent. It should be over here. Instead, as we just saw, the Fed funds rate is close to plus 4 percent. So not only have they stopped quantitative easing and are reversing it, they also raised the Fed funds rate in a super fast way in an unusually short period of time. So instead of the minus 4% that they should be, they are at plus 4%. That is a gap of 8%. That is the type of situation that causes a breakage of the entire system. I'm not saying that a breakage is going to happen, but the sheer magnitude of incompetence and mismanagement from the Federal Reserve truly beggars the belief. The only good thing I can say about these PhD economists is at least they don't think deflation would be good. A lot of gold bugs and other such amateur people who are very misinformed seem to think deflation would be good. These PhD economists at least know that deflation is not good because there was deflation in the Great Depression. The Great Depression being almost a century ago, 90 years ago in fact, is long enough that textbooks that PhD economists memorize do in fact talk about the Great Depression. But the Wuja shadow rate should be at minus 4% just based on the long term trend line of this chart alone, and instead they have the Fed funds rate at plus 4%. That is a gigantic gap. Now, why is the Federal Reserve overreacting this much? This is where it gets even worse. This is the Bureau of Labor Statistics website on the CPI inflation rate, and I talk about this at least once a month. And let's just take some of the gradients of second derivative of inflation based on the CPI here. This is two-month percentage change. It's already past its peak and falling back down to zero. So we are past the inflation spike in terms of the two-month percentage change rate, and the three-month percentage change rate is also past its peak and plunging. The six month percentage change rate is also past its peak and plunging. And the one year, the one that everyone looks at because the only unit of time that ever exists is one year, that is already flattening and it's about to plunge because all the others above it, two month, three month, and six month are already plunging. So this is about to plunge as well. But they are reacting to this number being high for just a few months. Only for a few months, which is to say maybe five or six months is their reading above 8%. That is causing the Federal Reserve to go from a 0% Fed funds rate to 4% and rising while also not just stopping QE, but reversing QE and thereby pushing the Wuja shadow rate from what should be minus 4%. It was never as deep as minus 4%, but that would comprise full liquidity matching technological deflation up to plus 4%. This is insane for them to react this late because all inflation measurements are already weakening. The internals of inflation, two month, three month, six month, as we saw, are all past their peak. And now they are raising interest rates in a rear view mirror point of view. These PhD economists at the Federal Reserve don't even know the difference between past and future. They are reacting to something that is already in the past. And their attempted method of reducing inflation is to eliminate jobs. They say we have to reduce three or four million jobs in the economy. They're deliberately trying to cause layoffs of three to four million people or more in their misguided attempt to halt inflation, which already is past its peak and has been for some months. Let's look at another inflation measurement, the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. The Goldman Sachs Commodity Index is the most holistic measurement of inflation because it is worldwide and it cannot be rigged. It comprises of freely traded commodities, oil, gold, natural gas, silver, and so forth. There was a peak that was already about six months ago. So let's take this one year chart. This was the peak. The GSCI was above 800, but it's already fallen. It's down to 665. It is past its peak and has been for a few months, just like we saw with the CPI measurement in the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And at the 10 year chart, it's only a zero point 0.62% growth rate, effectively no movement for 10 years. How can you call this inflation and how does this warrant such aggressive tightening by the central banks of the world, not just the US Federal Reserve, but all the central banks of the world? They were doing quantitative easing for all of these years. The Fed funds rate was 0% for the vast majority of this period and there was no inflation. So why would they react this way now? Especially when it still isn't inflationary. There was a spike that ended six months ago and it's already off quite a bit from there. 
Yet, this is the type of overreaction and trying to kill mosquitoes with a sledgehammer that the Federal Reserve is doing. They are so theoretical, they are so textbookish, they have no idea of the problem they're causing. It's just a video game to them because if millions of people's lives are damaged, they don't face any consequences, the people of the Federal Reserve. Their jobs are secure. They are immune to the economic cycles that they themselves create. How is that a fair system? So Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. And now one final measurement. Therefore, we are going to go to mortgage rates. This is the 30-year fixed rate mortgage rate. And for the first eight years of the last 10-year period, meaning from 2013 to 2021, mortgage rates were pretty stable. There was no volatility in this market, thereby causing home prices to steadily rise, but not to have too much volatility. Because the type of quantitative easing they do is very narrowly concentrated, the purchase of only treasuries and mortgage-backed securities, they pushed mortgage rates down to an unusually low level, 2.65% at its lowest point. Now, people who had bought homes before 2020, for them, this was fantastic. They had an existing amount of debt and they could refinance this down to a rate far lower than they ever thought they would see. But unfortunately, a lot of Americans cannot process a two variable equation and they think when interest rates are low, that is the time to buy a house and they think they're paying less, but in fact, they're paying more. See this video up here in the upper right hand corner to understand how this two variable equation is too complicated for most Americans and they end up buying when they should not be buying and therefore are destined to negative equity because they are taking out a mortgage of greater dollar value even though the interest rate is lower. The way to make home equity gains is to buy when interest rates are higher and then wait for interest rates to become lower and then refinance. That way you have both a lower mortgage balance and a lower interest rate. But in trapping a lot of people here, they have now forced mortgage rates to triple. We have gone from that 2.65% to now 6.95%, almost 7%. That is three times as much. On the same dollar amount, the payments would be about three times as much and that destroys new demand for homes and therefore home prices. So a lot of people are going to go into negative equity. Anyone who bought after March of 2020 is going to be in negative equity for quite some time because they took out a much larger loan balance. And even if they locked in a lower rate, the loan balance and the value of that home is going to shrink and they're going to be in negative equity. If they took a variable rate or even a 3-1 or 5-1 mortgage, they're going to have a triple whammy in that sense in that their payments will increase and their equity will be negative. And this is just like what happened in 2008, 2009, except then quantitative easing was new and was effective at rescuing people from their negative equity situation. Now that method has been completely saturated because how much can they do in terms of buying the same two instruments, mortgage-backed securities and treasuries? They have distorted those markets and they have made the business model of major financial institutions nothing more than front-running the Federal Reserve. BlackRock buys individual single-family homes in order to front run the Federal Reserve, which is what they have to do because there is nothing that is more of a direct guarantee of profit. Unfortunately, small time investors and individuals cannot front run the Federal Reserve as easily as a large institution like BlackRock or Goldman Sachs can. And this has therefore destroyed decision making across the entire economy. So you have this type of extreme swing in mortgage rates, which is going to cause a housing bust. If you take this chart going back from the beginning of the 21st century to now, even in 2005, 6, 7, mortgage rates didn't rise that much. The lowering was artificially engineered by quantitative easing in order to create a recovery, but that housing bust was not even triggered by a sharp rise in mortgage rates. Yet now we have something like this. And part of the problem is that these interest rates, they take six to nine months to work their way through the economy. The Federal Reserve themselves says that. That is basic macroeconomic thought. Yet why are they raising interest rates this quickly when the impact of the rate hikes they did three and four months ago are yet to be felt? They're overshooting. That's why I say they're like a novice day trader. Why raise all the way up to 4% when the last three hikes are still too recent for their effects to be felt? When mortgage rates rise this much, it has no effect if it's this high for only a week or two weeks. But when it's this high for six months, nine months, that's when you start to see a major cratering in the housing market and a major recession becomes inevitable as a result. So their increase in the Fed funds rate this quickly is almost as though they think that unless there's an immediate effect, then it had no effect. Even though they themselves say otherwise, 
How can they be acting this way? Now, cynics say that the Federal Reserve is deliberately trying to destroy the bottom 90% of people so that all wealth concentrates to the big institutions, which is not even the top 10% of people. That's less than the top 1% of people. I don't think that's true. I don't think they're that malevolent nor that competent. I think they just have a very textbookish theoretical outlook on things, and they believe that reducing employment by making millions of people lose their jobs is good because it will get rid of inflation that is already in decline long before their interest rate hikes because they're that theoretical. And remember, a PhD economist is happiest when they are in a room with five other PhD economists who have all memorized the same things and they all recite the same memorized jargon back to each other. The thing they want the least is someone with a differing set of ideas or someone with data that proves their memorized textbooks wrong. Remember that. But this was a lot of charts and this is becoming a complicated video. But we are on the brink of a major economic crisis in a matter of a few months or even six weeks, eight weeks. It hasn't happened yet, but that's because these rate hikes have not been felt yet at all. This rise in mortgage rates is only in the last two and a half months. Even August 18th was just 5.13%. 5.13 going to 7 has happened in the space of nine or 10 weeks. It has to be high for six to nine months for the effect to truly be felt. And that is what we're going to see as prior rate increases and quantitative tightening creates ripple effects that take six to nine months to percolate. And it's a crisis that is entirely artificially created because of the incompetence of PhD economists and the outdated nature of macroeconomic thought within the ivory tower of that establishment. I've said this many times on this channel, but a lot of people's lives are going to receive a lot of hardship and it's entirely unnecessary. Yet this is what has been engineered and we just have to watch and make sure we come out better on the other end. That's all we can do. Thank you very much for watching.